Hey there, I'm Tyler and welcome back to the channel. See this hideous glass door thingy right here? There used to be two of them right there and we needed to get rid of them. Today we're gonna get rid of these hideous glass doors and we're gonna build these beautiful farm style barn doors that are a bypass style, reusing the hardware that was already here. We need to make sure that this is actually on the bottom. We need to make sure the bottom is the right thickness to be able to accept these and they still ride in the middle of the track. It's really the only thing we gotta watch out for. We're gonna use some one by three material and some T111 and this has got kind of the smaller grooves in it. Right now I'm looking for pieces that have the least amount of curviness in them and these will be for the main front sections of each door. I'm gonna set them to the side and we'll hit them with the miter saw to get them down to the length that we need. Then the back ones, we actually need to rip them in half so that we can tack them to the back of this guy right here to get the thickness of the door that we're after. I'm gonna start off over at the table saw where we will rip down two sections of one by three and these will become the backs of our doors just to provide us the little bit of thickness that we need. Once we have those ripped down, we can cut them and those four pieces that we set aside for the two doors that we are gonna make over at the miter saw. We're gonna chop these down using the stop block for repeatable cuts and the dust collection on that miter saw is awesome. It actually worked out where the off cuts were exactly what we needed for the width I was after. That was just an accident. I actually had proper material in case this didn't work. We will be joining everything together using one and a quarter inch coarse pocket screws, cutting those pocket holes using the Craig K5 system. Inspecting the boards to make sure I don't drill through any knots and if there is any cup that it is in the orientation that I would like. We flip the boards around, drill two holes in each side, easy peasy and nice and clean with the K5 dust collection portion of the jig. Then we can move on to assembly and this is going to be done simply with one and a quarter inch coarse pocket screws and some wood glue. I'm going to go ahead and assemble the complete frame making sure that I got rid of any glue squeeze out because this is going to be stained and any glue squeeze out will translate through and not allow good coverage of the water based stain that I'm going to use. So again I'm going to assemble the entire frame and then take a measurement for what I need the thickness to be because these back strips as expected need to be ran through the planer to take a little bit of thickness off to allow the doors to be the overall thickness that I need. This machine is awesome. I understand that most people don't have a planer, let alone a big planer like this, but it is a joy to use with that helical head in there, and it's such a stable machine. Obviously, something you don't need for a build like this, but it is beautiful to have. Then we're going to glue and brad nail those strips that we just planed down to the thickness we are after onto our frames. I'm going to do just the two sides for now and we will move on to the top and the bottom after a little bit more work in installing the hardware. I got the siding right here that's gonna make up the main panel of both our doors and we need the interior dimension to be 20 and a half inches, but I don't just wanna cut 20 and a half and 20 and a half because I wanna make sure that the grooves of the siding are even with each other. So I'm going to measure 10 and a quarter from a central groove and I can do that twice and make sure that I have symmetry between the doors. So I'm going to measure that out and then we're going to make all the cuts here on the table saw. These are the rollers from the old doors and to make the spacing right for the strip that's in the floor uh, we need to actually install these right on the frame and not onto the T111 which I would typically put down right here. So we got to go ahead and screw those down and then we need to kind of cut the T111 out around it. Not a big deal just a little jigsaw work. That as is well established by now, I am reusing hardware that was on the hideous glass doors that were already in the house when we purchased it, but I'm sure you can find hardware like this at the box store or on Amazon if you're interested, and then there's much more beautiful options as well if you wanted something a little bit more pricey, but beautiful. And we're adding those top and bottom strips that you saw me do right there, and the bottom one is actually just cut between the rollers, the easiest method to do that. 
A little bit of measurement later, I had this crazy cut to get around those rollers at the bottom so that we could glue our T111 panel in place. And lessons learned, it's always better to sand panels like this before installing so that you can get up in the corners much more easily. We also sanded the frame while we had the sander out there. A little bit of glue and some shorter brad nails. I think these were three quarters of an inch brad nails to install the panels. You like that? For your room? Yeah, a bunk bed. It's a door. Any good finish starts with a good clean surface, and I'm using a combination of a brush, compressed air, and a tack cloth to make sure all the debris is removed before adding some stain. I don't stain very often, but when I do, I like to use this water-based stain from General Finishes. And this is actually our favorite color called Shaker Maple, which unfortunately is discontinued, but General Finishes was able to hook me up with one last quart for this project. We are ready to put some finish on these closet doors. I'm going to do my go-to of General Finishes Sanding Sealer with three coats of their Enduro Clear Poly. I will have a video in the future that goes into detail about how I do this. But uh, today we're just going to shoot it on with the Fuji Q5 Platinum System and kind of unusual but I'm going to be spraying it in the shop because although it looks nice out there it's like 12 degrees and super windy with a real feel below zero so I don't want to heat up the entire garage just for this quick spray project so we're going to do it in the shop. I'm going to make sure that we have the dust collector going with all the ports so that we recycle the air in here very very quickly. Uh, we'll have the air filter on and whatnot. It is water-based finish. It's about 62 degrees in here. So by the time any atomized liquid lands on the machines and whatnot, it will be dry and can be wiped right off. I don't do this very often, like I said, but I have done it before and no ill effects. As always, we will be using our Fuji Q5 Platinum Sprayer to apply the finish on this project, and I would like to thank Fuji Spray for sponsoring this video. Fujispray.com, link in the description below for all of your spraying needs. In front of you right now, you see the T75G HVLP spray gun. It's got some knobs and dials on there, but it is still very simple to dial in the fan pattern that you want and the volume flow. In conjunction with that, the Q5 sprayer in the Platinum series allows you to dial in the turbine speed, which really helps with dialing back that overspray, which is perfect for spraying indoors like this. Fujispray.com. Check them out and thank you. All right, we got the sanding sealer on both sides and it is ready to sand. I got a 150 grit sanding block and I'm going to knock off the raised grain. Now, because it's a water based finish, it pops the grain a little bit. So we need to whack that back down again. You want to go very, very lightly because we did use a water-based stain as well. We can very easily take that off. So you want to go lightly and you do want to make sure that you do not do this before you put the sanding sealer on. Do your stain, do your sanding sealer, and then knock off the popped grain. Very quick, very light, and you can feel the difference immediately once you do this. And now it is time for our top coat, which is the General Finishes Enduro Clear Poly. There are some links to these mixer tops down in the description. Everybody likes them every time I use them, so I have the link down there for you. The first two coats are going to be at full strength, as you see right here. And the last coat is going to be thinned down with an ounce of the General Finishes Accelerator to enhance product flow over the material. And that just gives you a little bit more glassy a finish. So we got the doors in the house now and again we are reusing the hardware so the track that's at the top and the rollers that are at the bottom of these doors. So the way that works it's actually a track that captures the door on either side. So to help preserve the door and to make it slide a little bit easier I'm using this Teflon tape which I got this a long time ago and I actually don't remember what project this was for but this will be perfect for this door preserving our finish on here and allowing it to slide a little bit easier in that track. Don't know if you remember the adjustability that we had in the hardware that was already here. Remember, uh, this is going to come in handy once we put these doors on to make sure they remain square to the wall, whether the wall is square or not.
All right, I think we're done building these barn doors. Couple things I noticed right off the bat. Oh, this trim probably gotta go so that it actually matches the stain style of the doors and which is the same style as the bunk bed right over here. And then I probably wanna do something so I can cover this track up with a piece of wood. Probably that piece of trim that we're gonna replace there. Cover that up just so it looks a little bit nicer. I hope you guys enjoyed this build and you found something in there that will help you out whether it's this project or something like this. This is a very easy style of barn door to make. I built a couple of these in the past and they look pretty awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If it did, please hit that thumbs up button as it helps us out and gets this video in front of more eyes. Make sure you check out the swag. There's a link to that down in the description below. Do you like those? Yeah. You like them? Are they pretty? Yeah. Thank you. I'm DIY Tyler. You guys have a good one. Wave bye. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> See ya.